I mean, I, look, I think it's it's challenging in ad tech. It's it's challenging in 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 most sectors that 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 we invest in. There are always hundreds nowadays, actually thousands of startups vying for a place in each one of these sectors. And one of the things certainly is, as investors that, that we accept as part of the, the sort of the underlying economics of investing in early stage companies is that the majority of these companies fail. So, you know, we typically, we focus on the ones that succeed, but the, the majority of these companies fail. I think when you look at ad tech, one of the biggest challenges is is scale. So um, on the one side and then uniqueness of data on the other. So if you don't have scale in ad tech, um, it's very, very hard to make a difference because you're really up against Google, Facebook, um, and then sort of the minnows like Twitter, who are actually pretty big. Um, so, you know, if you're competing against those kind of networks, it's very, very expensive to get to that kind of scale, um, unless you have something that is completely unique and proves its ROI. Um, so, you know, this is where I think someone like Criteo was, was very smart. It, it picked a very sort of small sector initially in the advertising industry, which was retailers. And they said, you know, retailers spend a lot of money getting people to their website. Then people don't buy. Well, what if you could um, target a personalized offer to the people who came to your website but didn't buy when they were elsewhere on the internet? Now, that turns out to be a really good way to get people who didn't buy on their first visit to buy on their second or third visit. And, you know, that is a, a proven model now where a retailer will say, I need this as part of my um, <clears throat> part of my arsenal because this will create more buyers, which is the point of advertising. So I think, you know, in a case like Criteo, once in a while you can create a very, very unique value proposition which has a proven sort of cause and effect and does something that most traditional advertising doesn't do, which is convert uh, a viewer into a buyer, which is sort of the holy grail of advertising. A lot of the businesses that we now look at in this sector, I think are probably more around um, actually helping brands and publishers understand the audience. Um, where to target a particular audience, how to target a particular audience. In the case of social bakers, for example, how your social media presence benchmarks against your competitors. And I think those kind of tools that help brands and publishers analyze data uh, are becoming increasingly valuable. But I think the sort of the ad targeting, the ad network space is, is very, very hard to break into because the scale that you need to even become relevant, you kind of need to get to three, four hundred million monthly uniques minimum to be relevant um, and compete against the likes of Google, Facebook, or you know, a great sales organization like you know the FT or the Guardian or the New York Times. Okay. No, I completely agree. Just to add to that, I think what you know, as Saul was saying. I think what's happening, and we've been talking a bit about the future of media, I think attention spans of audiences are obviously getting shorter. Right? So technologies, startups, or companies that are going to be able to figure out how to capture the shorter attention spans more intelligently, whether it's with insights, data, intention, analyzing you know, behavior of what these people are doing, that's where the value is going to be. I completely agree with what Saul was saying.